You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. Jephthah and Headship I was asked a question yesterday about the story of Jephthah. It's to do with whether or not Jephthah sacrificed his daughter. I'll come back to that problem in another podcast. Maybe fairly soon, but since I'm on holiday, maybe not. For now, I want to deal with a question that came up for me as I was looking at the story of Jephthah again. I'd never before noticed just how often the word head is used in the telling of the story. It's only three times, but they're three fairly key occurrences. You find them in Judges 11, 8, 9 and 11. It's the usage in verse 11 that's perhaps the most prominent. When Jephthah finally gets his way, so Jephthah went to the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and commander over them. And Jephthah spoke all his words before the Lord at Mizpah. Seems fairly clear. The people made Jephthah the boss. The war leader, at least. And possibly more. And clearly, in the Bible, the Hebrew Bible, head is associated with leadership. And this raises questions about Paul's use of head. You'll remember I have a podcast about that, that you might want to listen to after this one. Or maybe this one will solve it for you. What does Rosh mean in the Bible? Well, first of all, its main usage isn't metaphorical. Its main usage is simply that thing that stops our necks from fraying. Rosh means head. But as meaning head, it very quickly and obviously has a metaphorical use for the top of things. The head of a cane or a tree or a mountain or a... And so it becomes used for strongholds and the tops of pillars and things like that. But Rosh also means the first, as well as the head. And as meaning the first, and possibly also as meaning head, it comes to mean prominent, especially of people. This is very close to the notion of a chief, and many of the Bible usages of Rosh about people are close to chief. There are a string of references and there are more going on through Scripture. Often Rosh is used of the head of a clan or other family group. And this metaphorical use of Rosh is more developed in Hebrew, in Biblical Hebrew, than in any of the other Semitic languages, though most of them have a cognate word. But Hebrew uses it more often. Some of them do use it, but less. So. Does this usage explain Paul's use of the metaphor head in talking about Jesus and about husbands? The question basically is, does Paul's use of head derive from this biblical usage in Hebrew? As a general principle, the Bible is its own best interpreter. And, even more sharply, we know that Paul was absolutely steeped in Scripture. I've just been teaching a course on Isaiah, and teaching Isaiah again has reminded me just how much the thought of Isaiah permeates the thought of Paul. So, first glance, it seems very likely that this use of head as leader in the Hebrew Bible determined what Paul meant by head. But does it, and how much does it, and how does it? Let's look closer. Does Paul mean the same sort of thing as head priests and that when he talks about head? And as a corollary to that, what does it mean to say someone is a head priest? Rosh was associated with rule and command. It was used of the title head priest. But its main metaphorical uses, as we've already noticed a bit, were for people who were prominent and or first. It's interesting that when Rosh means command, it's often associated with other words that add the idea of commander. And we get just that in Judges 11.11. 11. So Jephthah went to the, with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and commander over them. The and commander bit there is kasin. It's a rarer word than rosh, but it's a word that clearly means commander or chief. It means boss. It means war leader. The people made Jephthah head and commander. To me that suggests that Rosh as head 
does not, at least primarily, mean commander. doesn't primarily mean the one who gives orders. It primarily means something rather like our modern head of state. Someone who represents, who is prominent. So, does the story of Jephthah help us to solve the problem of headship in Paul? I don't think so. But listen to my other podcast and see what you think. Bye for now. God bless.